What am I listening to? Yeah, what music are you listening to? Music? Yeah. Well, I, my wife is trying to educate me. I have very conservative tastes, but she's introducing me to jazz for the first time in my life. And some of it is just noise, but some of it I can begin to comprehend. She's trying. Yeah. <laughs>a mixed story. The uh, two minutes to midnight was established in January. Uh, in March, two months later, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists came out with a very significant article which would describe how we're a little closer to midnight. They, it was a careful discussion by leading specialists who pointed out that uh, the uh, Mo nuclear modernization programs uh, started under Obama under congressional pressure now extending under Trump uh, have actually uh, increased the uh, what they call the kill ratio of weapons to, to an extreme point up to the point where they say explicitly that the US nuclear posture today is the posture that a government would have that is planning a first strike. Uh, Putin gave a talk uh, on nuclear policy a couple of weeks ago, which was bitterly condemned because he pointed out that the Russians are developing weapons which will uh, evade the anti-ballistic missile systems that the U.S. is creating. Yeah, that's what happens. When you put uh, a system on the border of an adversary, which is in effect a first strike weapon, they're going to counter-react. So that's escalating. And if you look at the, the general tendency since the two-minute warning is to increase it, uh, the Iran deal also does. However, there are other things. Uh, North Korea and South Korea are clearly moving towards an attempt at reconciliation and uh, denu even denuclearization. Uh, furthermore, the declaration, Panmunjom Declaration, it has uh, deadlines, uh, commitments, uh, details about the steps that will be taken by the two Koreas on their own accord. Now, if the Trump administration has any brains at all, uh, just don't interfere with what the two Koreas are doing. Uh, you want to take credit for it, that's fine. You know, you want to prance around in public, that's your business. But just leave us alone so we can settle this in peace. Now, if the Trump administration agrees not to disrupt it, that's the crucial issue. And nothing they're doing it, it helps it. The sanctions were nothing, the threats were nothing. Uh, they can talk whatever they like, but uh, the two Koreas are seeking to move towards peace. In general, the tendency is negative, but there are some positive signs. International solidarity among people is quite possible, and it can have an effect, because they could affect their own governments. In the case of North Korea, there's something very definite that we should be doing, pressing the US government politely to stay away. And maybe Trump will do it anyway, because then he can get credit for it. You know, he can get a Nobel Prize, uh, be a transformative figure of his, uh, you know, his. Uh, go to Mount Rushmore or whatever he wants. Uh, in the case of Iran, the Europeans, in my opinion, are very unlikely to stand up to the United States. The United States is just too frightening. Uh, we don't think about that here, but the world is terrified of the United States. In fact, uh, there's even evidence for it. Uh, there's the Gallup administration, uh, poll, polling carries out international polls every year. One year, 2013, they asked a very important question, which they've never asked again, because they didn't like the answer, I suspect. Uh, they asked the question, uh, which country is the greatest threat to world peace? Uh, the United States, nobody, nobody else was even close, literally. That was the last time that question was asked. However, solidarity among peoples in the European countries in the United States could make a difference. One in lessening the threats from the United States, that's our job. Another is uh, fortifying other governments to stand up to the United States, which is 
other people's jobs. But that's a basis for international solidarity. It is in everyone's interest in the world to cut back the threat of nuclear war and global warming. I mean, one thing that is absolutely astounding, there is absolutely nothing like it in history. We have an organization, a major organization, which is dedicated to destroying the possibilities of human life. That has never happened before. It wasn't true of the Nazis. It wasn't true of Attila the Hun. You know, there's just nothing like it in history. It's called the Republican Party. Uh, here's the most powerful country in human history, which is telling the world, we're not going to cooperate in dealing with a devastating problem. We're going to make it worse. We're going to maximize the use of fossil fuels, which we know very well are destroying the environment. Of course, they know it. Like uh, Trump may say there's no global warming, but he's building walls around his golf course to stop uh, you know, sea, the sea level rise. And this is really serious. This is not in the far future. Um, the last time the world was uh, anywhere near this temperature, a couple of degrees above, about 125,000 years ago, the uh, sea level was maybe uh, 50, 20, 30 feet higher than it is now. Can you imagine what that would mean? And we're moving in that direction. It, it's an imminent problem. It, the fact that this is happening is astonishing enough. The fact that it's not a headline in the newspapers every day is even more astonishing. That and the increasing threat of nuclear war are, are really you know, do raise questions about whether the human species is even viable. Uh, Bernie Sanders did something that completely broke with American political history. Um, the most remarkable thing about last November, December 16th, November's bank, was not the election of Trump. It's the first time that a candidate went way to the top no funding from the corporate sector, no funding from private wealth, no media support, either ignored or denigrated, they ended up, could, might have won the election, uh, most popular political figure in the country. Uh, in a democratic society, the most popular political figure on the country would be over the front pages every day. Okay, that's the way we keep this, our system keeps democracy from functioning here. He talked about socialism, but it meant New Deal, welfare state capitalism. Uh, Corbyn's the same. The parliamentary Labour Party is dedicated to killing him. Uh, the uh, Guardian, you know, the liberal press, is just carrying out a massive campaign against him. Uh, all kind of crazed charges about anti-Semitism, this, that, and the other thing. They're doing anything they can to undermine him. He's maintaining popular support. It's quite similar to the Sanders phenomenon. The uh, liberal establishment press and political class are desperately trying to crush these movements, but they're maintaining themselves. In the United States and something similar in England, uh, the Democratic Party has an internal crisis, and if it can't overcome it, it'll probably you know, decline, continue to decline. The popular base is social democratic. The establishment is donor-oriented New Democrats. Uh, and there's a break there. If they can't get together, they're in trouble. And there's something similar in England with the popular base being in favor of kind of social democratic policies, Corbyn-type policies, and the parliamentary party and the leadership, the Blair-type, uh, you know, equivalent of New Democrats, they're trying to block it, along with the liberal press. And that's a very serious problem in the sort of center left. Mm -hmm.